Hello and welcome to this NewsX Business World special series on the budget. Leading up to the budget, we'll take one or two topics in one episode, put an eminent panel together and start talking about it. That's as simple as it sounds. Tonight, joining us, Amarjeet Singh, partner with KPMG, Saurabh Arora, CEO of Library. Is that how you pronounce it? Librate. 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 It's a very interesting name. We also have Rajat Tandon. Uh, he is Vice President of 10,000 Startups at NASCOM. Praful Mathur, Founder and CEO. Uh, and your company would say is called Wood Stay. Yes. And uh, Dhruv Agarwal completes the panel, Chief Executive Officer of Prop Tiger. So we have some entrepreneurs with us, some experts, and we'll try and make the best of it. I'd like to start with Amar Dhu Singh, if I could. Uh, first of all, what's the, what's the feeling, what's the vibe of this budget as far as startups are concerned? The Prime Minister's spread project, he's announced something on the, Janu on the 16th of January, there is expectation there will be more in the budget, but how realistic are those expectations? I think first thing which he need to take care is some of the promises that he's made in the action plan, that they are put properly in fine print as part of the budget itself, because there's always this uh, slip between the cup and the lip. We talked about the tax holiday, we spoke about the capital gain, we spoke about uh, how the premium should not be taxed. I think they should be brought in a proper fashion. Besides that, I think there is a clear feeling that these tax benefits per se are not good enough. As well I'll as come to that in just a bit, of course, and that is going to be the crux really of our program on what else is needed. I'd like to go across right away to Rajat Tandon, uh, feeling expectations from the budget. Sir, so, if, you, if you saw what you, the, the vibe in that room on 16th, it was awesome. And I think the vibe start. that day was electric, no Absolutely. doubt about it. But so, the, like he said, a, a lot of distance between the cup and the lip. So I think that's where the startups have a lot of expectations from the action plan. And uh, I think uh, at least it's a good step. And hopefully in this budget, if not, you know, all what was promised, but at least if we could get 50% of what was promised, that will be quite exciting for the startups. Uh, expectations. Uh, you know, I think uh, the Prime Minister on Startup India Day made a very, very telling comment where he said that for 70 years, you know, we've done what we've done with the government doing stuff. And he said, now we should think about the next 70, about doing things without the government. I think, uh, you know, looking at just this budget is a little uh, short term. If you ask me, the entrepreneurial ecosystem in the last 18 months has tremendously grown in the country. The animal spirits of entrepreneurship have been unleashed. And I think budget or no budget, we are going to move forward, uh, you know, uh, as, as a nation uh, because the ecosystem has been built, is getting built, and, and there's no stopping uh, the startup entrepreneur. So the beast has been unleashed, but it needs a nurturing environment to grow then. It does. What I'd like to see is uh, what is the whole vision? Uh, do you see startups as small taxpayers of today, or do you see them as few of them uh, becoming big companies and huge taxpayers of tomorrow, big employee base that they would create who would also give, uh, give taxes? So it's the vision that I'm more interested in. Uh, the vision of the government or the definition of startups per se? The vision of, vision of the government. So, see, the steps taken till now, I see them as more uh, good steps, uh, but more ad hoc. So, I need to see a pattern to this. Where is this going in the next coming years? So you, need, you need to be codified, really, and roadmap to be yes. codified in the next five to ten years. Let's exactly say. that. All right. Uh, coming to you, Saurabh, now, what are expectations, really? Before I move on to what Amarjit had very uh, uh, importantly mentioned, uh, that uh, tax holiday is not being enough, but yes, first. No, I think uh, the mood has been quite positive mm -hmm. on you know on the recent announcements that have been made. I think what would you know matter now in the budget is you know devil as they say lies in the details. Absolutely. So what are the details? Uh, what are the you know areas that would uh, help uh, you know more entrepreneurs to come and start companies? Mm -hmm. uh, how can we balance uh, not just technology but let's say in manufacturing sector as well? So we just don't want only technology companies to come in India, but there is a lot of innovation that's required across sectors. And that is something that I would want to see. And that perhaps is a mistake many Indians make. Uh, identifying startups with only tech companies or IT <coughs> companies and, and just keeping it there as well. And that needs to change as well. Yes. I think, uh, you know, India you know, as such is, is, is one of the largest sort of you know, democracies and has been growing at a phenomenal pace. But what's, more, what's required is a lot of problems that we as Indians face. Uh, solutions to those will come from us as, is on, only. Okay, Not just from, you know, companies. Uh, or companies I'm going to have opening comments out of the way. Let's... Uh, let's Begin by agreeing on one thing, and Amarjeet, I think you'll agree with me, just tax exemptions alone uh, are not going to uh, kickstart that startup revolution in, in the country. Most experts, like you, and I've read your interviews, agree that the entire ecosystem needs to be geared up towards uh, a startup culture to be uh, successful in India. What would that look like broadly? So, if, if I, besides tax, what are the things a typical startup needs? I think the most important thing is a funding ecosystem. And the funding ecosystem has to be created that 
it's an enabler for people to put in money it's an enabler in a manner that if somebody is exiting then at that time he is entitled to certain tax benefits so there is a connect with the tax benefits then uh, ability to actually have uh, convertible uh, you know notes the way rbi has already spoken about in the circular for uh, which which came in on february 2nd uh, talking about ecbs uh, uh, easily accessible so that is easily accessible so the ecosystem besides the tax it has to be around regulations the regulations have to be simplified i don't expect a startup guy to concentrate on regulations rather than his own business mm, mm. so you have to create those you know shop and establishment act you know it should be for a startup it should be taken out well, startups will make money for the first three years no? Abs mm. absolutely absolutely and from the tax side i think the exemption which has been given for three years the intention is right but the issue would be the three years has to be in a block of a year so to the choice of uh, to the choice of the invest uh, to the of the choice of the startup oh, so would, you, would you say the announcements made by the prime minister the other day and i'm uh, addressing you here would you say that there were at least some hints that it would be ease of doing business would be perhaps seriously looked at in terms of alternate funding for example venture capitalists who are investing their money the foreigners they might find it easier to go by uh, as far as uh, the policy is concerned now right so in terms of some of the announcements while you know the target is venture capitalists but again mm. to grow the ecosystem you need the angels right in the country and i yeah. think there are enough angels in the country as long as we can fix those problems about the angel tax, domestic capital or any angel investor? domestic so okay. domestic capital angels mm. you know set the setup the whole issue is that you know in terms of capital gain tax why can't i be exempted on selling when i sell my equity why can't i be exempted if i put that money back into some other startup right mm -hmm. so that's very important that will help rather than me investing in you know some other you know areas of of investments i would be coming in directly investing into startups right what about angel tax you know today if i want to invest the money actually is taxed by 30% uh, and plus before it hits the startup so that money is of no use to him right so i think some of this has to get off but like there was something said on angel investors by the prime minister right. i think there was some announcement i'm not i'm qu quite not sure what it was but he did mention something about angel investors having to forego some sort of tax didn't he so that was basically if you putting the money into a uh, into a uh, uh, the fund of fund which is being set, the set up by the government the fund 2500 crore uh, absolutely uh, there the capital uh, that will be a roll, ro uh, roll forward benefit will be available the mm. capital gains are actually deployed there mm. and then that money as far the angel funds are concerned one of the benefits which is being granted to them is that they can certify that somebody is a startup and to that extent it is included in the startup definition mm. but i think the intention of the government if you ask is much more and now how it is implemented i think the budget is a very good opportunity for them to actually do that this budget of course this budget itself yeah. because i think this budget is something uh, has to clearly clarify the government means business is alternate funding really as we understand or as you as experts understand it can it be the magic wand so to say to, to you know kick start the startup revolution in india no i i think you know it's it's, it's not, not as simple just alternate funding it's about yeah you know if if you if you ask me uh, you know there already is a fairly robust you know uh, funding ecosystem uh, within the country uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, the, the bluest of blue chip vc funds from across the world are in india with offices in india uh, the angel ecosystem uh, you know as rajat mentioned is is fairly robust now i think one of the things really is uh, from an exit standpoint i think the the issues are not around putting the capital in it's about the exit i think one of the things uh, you know which uh, you know we've been asking for and i think amarjit is the best position to comment in terms of what he thinks about we'll it we get to that uh, but but <laughs> but but we believe that bringing uh, the capital uh, capital gains tax regime for unlisted equities at par with listed equities can go a long way in in easing exit for angels and other investors and right. that's the exit uh, the prime minister talked about he did talk about it now now i remember it he of course talked about uh, making it easier for them to exit for any uh, vc to exit would you say that that perhaps if is achieved in this budget perhaps is yeah the way in fact in fact before that i'd like to extend uh, what what uh, amar just said uh, mm -hmm. especially in the regulatory framework of foreign funds so we've raised two rounds from european funds and what we've realized is that uh the documentation that you have to do uh with RBI takes a lot of uh time and effort so mm -hmm. i'd rather be focusing on my business rather than doing all see even if it's a uh, 1 dollar mm -hmm. here or there you can be booked under fema mm -hmm. so that's that's something which a startup should not be bothered about 
but it is a case. Would you agree that's the that's the case currently for most people who want to uh, you know start up? So there are two points being mentioned here. One is you know regarding the you know the angel uh, sort of ecosystem in the country. I would say today if I have hundred bucks, I would you know rather invest in. In, in Indian equity listed companies, let's say I'll buy a share of SBI mm. versus investing in a fellow entrepreneur. But primarily because, you know, that investment is, you know, after a year, I know SBI is doing great. You know where it stands. Where it stands yeah. and after a year I would get a tax-free return. Mm. But however, this is not the truth, that's not the case in the unlisted companies, which is the startup. So that's point one. So we should allow more folks to become, they have the capital today, it's not just the you know the angel angels themselves. There are a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of fellow so friends. Boils down to regulation, basically. What you're saying is, as far as regulation is eased, then people will start investing more. Yeah. So that's that's point one. Mm. The second point about uh, regarding, uh, regarding the paperwork of raising money you know from abroad and uh, having to go through with the RBI you know RBI sort of you know regulations, mm. I would certain little bit differ uh, uh, to an extent that you know uh, paperwork is required. However, we could look at you know easing the process. We could look at uh, simplifying the rules, how they are interpreted. So many of the times, even the most respected tax attorneys would not even know whether this dollar is supposed to be in bucket A or bucket B. Is that, is that a concern for all of you, or is it just uh, uh, is it just sort of? Uh, as an entrepreneur, I can say that look, I uh, I haven't faced that concern as such. Sometimes the shareholder agreements which one has to sign, I think works both ways. It also helps to protect the entrepreneur uh, going forward. I think the point Amarjeet made about uh, ECBs. Mm. I think if ECBs are allowed for startups, because typically you're not allowed to use that capital for funding working capital requirements, and that's why startups don't have access to that. Mm. But if that can be allowed, as RBI has indicated, it might. I think that can go a long way because sometimes in the initial stages, there's a huge challenge in pricing uh, equity. Uh, and if you have ECBs, which are like promissory notes, which can convert at a f future round of valuation, can really help the entrepreneur from a valuation. It's a great idea. How realistic is it for this budget? I think it's, it's uh, you know, it's A, not linked to the budget. RBI, you know, can announce it any day if needed. And if uh, there is a uh, consensus within the government to, you know, make things easier for startups, it can happen any day. Going back to VCs and venture capitalists, uh, the, the, the trick really, and you'll we'll comment on this later, the trick really is not just to get them to invest in India. It's also making them stay making them comfortable here. So we all go back to the ease of doing business again. So that's the fundamental problem, really, or one of the fundamental problems. I'll get to the other problems in just a bit. So like Dhruv also mentioned, today, in terms of in India, we've got probably the eight out of the 10 top VCs here in India. I mean, the challenges they face is, you know, if I invest the money, I mean, how am I going to take that money out? Yes. Either I have to move the startup to a different country. Like, I mean, half mm -hmm. them are getting mm -hmm. formed in Singapore right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. I think that's something which needs to be stopped. The government has to kind of understand that and, and figure out a way that there is no need for the startups to go out of India. Amarjit, very quick comment on this. I think uh, as far as moving the companies out of uh, India is concerned, uh, there, there are various reasons for it. I just don't want to get into because uh, that, uh, that, 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 that can that be connected to the IPR, that could be connected to a future no, listing, mm. future listing kind of a thing. But having said, it's a very important observation because the point is the VCs should have the comfort that you know if they are investing money in that after the life cycle of their fund they can take their fund out in a proper fashion mm. in any case they are suffering a normal depreciation of indian currency because of it they lose mm. so they need to get into a situation they are able to get an upside based upon the valuation at least and the ability to list you know today the west is moving to a crowdfunding model they are going to into a model where smaller list companies can be listed the Indian stock exchanges are still very traditional. The Indian investors are very traditional. So the exits for the VCs, the private equity funds, etc., is all about getting another person to buy. So the exit, the, the overall exit system is not just purely capital gains. It has to be around how a VC is able to get his money back to pay back to its investors. Okay, let's go back to uh, the kind of money uh, we've seen. I think one survey put it around 20 billion uh, USD. Uh, but if you look at the figure of 20 billion invested, domestic capital is a very small percentage of it. Going back to domestic capital one more time, how important is it to unlock it, uh, uh, to start up India, so to say, and where exactly will it come from? Where exactly is it parked in India, which could be looked at, starting with you? And then move around to you. So again, I think you know a lot of corporates today uh, as well, are they looking at how they can park some of their money 
there is CSR money too, which can come out for startups. And also, in terms of you're looking at the startups themselves who've grown, you know, reached a certain uh, you know, kind of milestone, they are also looking at putting across a certain sum of money to invest it back into the startup ecosystem. So, okay, uh, some, yeah. of, some of it parked park there. Yeah. Where, where else is the money? Is pension funds, is pension funds some of the possibility? In the West, pension funds are hugely popular there. Correct, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, uh, I mean, the government can easily go out and mandate, uh, for example, you know, a, a pension fund uh, like we have the Provident Fund of India mm. or, you know, even the EPF or even mandate, say, an LIC to put aside a certain part of the corpus which goes towards contributing as an LP towards a, a venture capital fund. Now, the government has spoken about, you know, a 10,000 crore uh, venture capital fund. I just hope that, uh, you know, once that's executed, the management of that is left to, you know, venture professionals who but really understand the business. is that 10,000 crore is a very small percentage or a small amount of money for, because uh, that's not enough, many entrepreneurs will argue, and bail me out here. Do you think the, uh, the, the fund of 2,500 crore rupees and also the fund of funds and the 10,000 crore corpus, do you think that's going to be enough to just throw money at that and, try and hope something yeah. good comes out? See, there's one more point to it rather than only money. So mm. uh, you, you mentioned about uh, where the money is parked in the domestic uh, mm. this thing. What we need to realize is, as he also pointed out, uh, many successful uh, entrepreneurs of India now are becoming angel investors as well. What we need to realize is it's not only the money that they're bringing in, it's, 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 it's the experience that they've uh, had for the last mm. 10, 10 mm. years. Mm. So we need to have a framework wherein they can be lured into investing in uh, uh, more startups, investing further rounds into those startups, and these startups would actually benefit out of uh, the pain points they have. Uh, these successful entrepreneurs have uh, suffered. Mm. So more than money, I think it's the right people that we need to attract. Uh, hold that thought. We'll uh, come back in just a moment. Much more to talk about. Stay tuned. Delhi, Delhi, Delhi. Ye hai Delhi. Desh ki dhalkan. Kabhi tez raftar se chalti hai dhalkan hai. To kabhi zindagi ki tez raftar mein. अचानक धम सी जाते हैं। कुछ भी नहीं, सुनता नहीं है यार। रेड सिग्नल होते हुए भी ये लोग जाते रहते हैं, और इसके वजह से ये प्रॉब्लम हो जाता है। तो जहाँ पे ट्रैफिक पुलिस वाले खड़े रहते हैं, वहाँ पे तो लोग रूल को फॉलो करते हैं, पर जहाँ पे ट्रैफिक पुलिस वाले नहीं होते हैं, � हर जगह पर ट्रैफिक कॉप की तैनाती भी मुमकिन नहीं थी ऐसे में दिल्ली पुलिस के आला अफसरों ने पुलिस पब्लिक पार्टनरशिप की नई सोच के साथ एक नई पहल की शुरुआत की एक नई ऐप लॉन्च करके जिसका नाम है ट्रैफिक सेंटिनल ट्रैफिक सेंटिनल कोई भी व्यक्ति हो सकता है इसके लिए बहुत सिंपल सा प्रोसेस रखा गया है वो गूगल प्ले स्टोर पे या एपल स्टोर पे जाकर इस मोबाइल ऐप को डाउनलोड कर सकता है जहाँ भी वो इस तरह का कोई ट्रैफिक का वायलेशन देखता है वो मोबाइल फोन को यूज करते हुए वो उस वायलेशन को फोटोग्राफ कर सकता है या वीडियो बना सकता है वायलेशन की डेट टाइम प्लेस ऑफ वायलेशन एंड काइंड ऑफ वायलेशन ये उसको रिपोर्ट करना होता है उसके बेसिस पे हम लोग उसको वैलिडेट करते हैं और वैलिडेट करने के बाद उस व्यक्ति के अगेंस्ट चलान इशू करते हैं दिनों दिन इस इनिशियटिव ऐसी जुड़ने वालों की संख्या बढ़ती जा रही है मैं लोगों को बोलूंगी तो यूज दिस ऐप क्योंकि ये बहुत यूजफुल है दिल्ली पुलिस ने उनके लिए बहुत अच्छी चीज बनाई है ट्रैफिक सेंटर उस पर हम लोग रिपोर्ट कर सकते हैं हमारी सारी प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व हो सकती है ट्रैफिक सेंटर हम खुद फॉलो करते हैं अब दिल्ली की सड़कों पर कभी भी आपकी मुलाकात किसी ट्रैफिक सेंटर ऐसी से हो सकती है ये एक अवसर है आज की आम जनता के लिए दिल्ली पुलिस के साथ मिलकर कल का भविष्य सुधारने के लिए Welcome back. Uh, this is the one on startups and the ease of doing business and creating the ecosystem for the startup revolution that India is looking for. We'll jump right back in to the discussion. Uh, you know, I would agree to that, that we would need uh, because what happens is you know, when a startup is in its infancy, a lot of hand-holding you know, is required. Mm. A lot of times people wouldn't know how to scale a business, how to get your first hundred users. You know, there's a different skill set which is required when you've reached a million users and you're going from a million to a 10 million mark 
versus from zero to thousand. So that skill set cannot be just bought by money. That skill set cannot be. Uh, you cannot acquire users by just throwing money at them. It needs time. It needs time. It needs it's, it's needs incubation. It needs uh, proper nurturing, and that would happen if you have not just entrepreneurs investing, but a whole ecosystem that sort of you know, nurtures these young uh, folks hmm. to solve India's real problems. Yeah, okay, I, I think uh, the government can't do much about it. I think the yeah. ecosystem, which has already started, is going to naturally build build over time. It can't happen overnight, and yeah. I think the government can't do much about that. Okay, it's let's talk about yeah. the. It's just the. See, if these entrepreneurs, if these angel investors realize that you know tomorrow once they get any capital gain out of it, they so, might. So it goes back to the uh, to, to exit, everyone, the capital to gain space. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of capital gains, yes. Mm. Go ahead. Please. I'm just saying what we require is a middle layer, mm. a middle layer. Today, a HNI is putting in money into listed securities, into fixed deposits, and into his friends' companies. The HNI has to get that has to get that comfort that if I put in a money into a properly managed domestic fund, and that domestic fund is investing into startups, that middle layer has to come. Now, whether it has to come in the normal course or through uh, incentives or enablers by the government, which are the tax benefits, etc. That has to arise. Until that comes up, I think there will be a struggle. Okay, as things stand currently, and this is after the Prime Minister's indications and hints and announcements and what have you, overseas venture capitalists are exempt for uh, who invest in startups are exempt from the 20% capital gains tax on that investment. Plus, uh, it also extends uh, to the invest any investment in the funds of funds that has been created there as well. There is an argument. I don't know how feasible it is that perhaps this scope should be widened further. Is that even feasible? I think it is feasible. I think what is important is if you actually talk to the government, their biggest issue is leakage. They say that you know, we are living in an economy wherein lot of lot of money which is put into this kind of a uh, incentive situation is misutilized. Uh, people setting up their own funds to actually uh, fund their own operation. Mm. So. Uh, the government has to trust and at the same time the people who are setting up these funds have to actually comply with the regulation if that happens it is possible okay and and i don't think the government will be averse to it because if it's a severely registered kind of fund properly monitored and uh, they are not misusing i think it, this can very easily c convert into mm. a proper before i come to the one question wish list i have one last question on the anti uh, avoidance uh, rule there as well now um, what are the chances that the government or the fm can oblige on that one since we all agreed on this panel that startups go through multiple stages and multiple layers of funding it when it's when they start up very quickly to you uh, look you know it's it, it's hard to say uh, you know what they are going to do about it uh, but uh, I think uh, as far as uh, you know, my understanding goes or the expectation is that it's a matter of time that you know, those rules are going to uh, you know, come in place and uh, I think we all have to gear up for that. One, one if, if Mr. Jaitley was sitting on this table, one uh, request, one question starting with you, Rajat. I would say you know, remove the angel tax, that's it. <laughs> all right, remove the angel tax. I'll come to you last though, yes. I think one important thing, this is on indirect taxes. If you know service tax can be paid on collections as opposed to you know invoicing, it would be a great help to startups because all of us, you know, as startup companies, have a very close watch on cash flow, yeah. and that could be a big help. Fair enough. Hundred percent. So it's uh, some show there is intent, but it's a very bold move. Uh, so I, I I would again say tax is some something we'll keep a close eye on, plus the regulatory framework as well. So if we are in the know that what's going to happen, and if we know a pattern. That's going to be a uh, good thing. Plus, you need the strategy to be codified. Yes, as you mentioned. Yes, yes. Rather. Sorry, uh, sorry. My, my I would say you know talent is the fuel of the startup. Yes. And to retain talent, you need cash, which is the working capital point. I would say the input credit on service tax, which currently lasts only for a year, if can that can be extended for two to three years, that would be a great help. One request to Mr. Jaitley. Given all that, that he has to deal with politically or otherwise. So besides other things we've spoken, I think the M&A provisions should be codified for in relation to startups because there will be a phase of consolidation wherein it is important that from an M&A perspective, the losses can be carried forward. Uh, the brought forward losses should not be lost. I think those are very important things I think we Mr. Jaitley should think about. That's all the time we have. I, I hope uh, that we covered enough space. So this one, of course, on startups and the ease of doing business. I must thank Amar Deep Singh for joining us. Saurabh Barora, Praful Mathur, Dhur Agarwal, and Rajat Tandon. Thank you all for being here. We'll take a short break right now. More to follow on the other side. Stay tuned.